right? So I want to show you guys why client-side authentication or JavaScript authentication or any other authentication that's visible to the client or to the visitor of the website is bad, right? So let me actually show you what I'm talking about. So you have a login page here, right? So if I put wrong credentials, it will not allow me to log in. If I put the correct credentials, it will allow me to log in, right? Simple. However, now one good habit that you need to learn is to see what makes the web page or actually what's behind the web page. So what I'm trying to say is if you just right click and view page source, right? So this is what actually makes the web page. Now you're going to ask, what am I actually looking for? What you're looking for here is JavaScript files, JavaScript code, HTML comments, and to be honest, anything that sort of caught your eye or is responsible for whatever you're trying to do. Obviously, if you're trying to bypass a login page or trying to log in as admin, you would look for something that allows you to do that, right? Hope that makes sense. So in this case, obviously, what we're here for is login.js. That's basically the file that's responsible for the authentication. So if you click it, and as you can see, it actually shows you how it authenticates. So it actually shows you the source code of how this works. So we have two variables, username and password, and it actually tells you if username equals admin and password equals password, login successful, and if not, then incorrect username and password. So let's actually try this. Right, let me just launch it again, there we go. So if I put admin and password, it will tell you login successful. However, if you put something wrong, it will basically say, sorry, incorrect password. However, this is a very, very basic, this is no protection at all. And to be honest, to put this on a web page, you would have to be crazy, in my opinion. Now, because... something more common and so something slightly more secure is this. Now, what is this? As you see, there is additional function that has been added to the username and password. Now, what is this? What has been added is basically, if you know JavaScript, you will definitely know what this is. BTOA is a JavaScript function that basically encodes base64 and decodes base64. Right? So base64, if, if you've been basically around security, you will definitely know. And if you're a developer, you will definitely know what is base64, right? So if you just take burp suite and you take these two values, so just take this value, right? Boom, decode as base64, admin, boom, and let's decode this one as well. See if we can, there we go. So as you can see, I just decoded the whole value, admin password, right? So let's actually try this again. So let's try admin password, and as you can see, login successful. However, if you were to try these values, it will not work, right? So let me just, or let's copy these values, and let me show you that it will not work, right? There you go. Even though that these basically values represent base64 values of admin and password, they will not decode or allow you access to the website. They need to be actual plain text passwords for you to authenticate. Now, one more thing I would like to show you is something that you might have never seen before, right? So let me actually show you. So if you view page source again, come to obfuscated.js, what you'll see is something like this. Now, what is this? This is basically obfuscated JavaScript code, and it doesn't actually make any sense if you view. So this is the actual code, and it's obfuscated, and it doesn't actually make any sense. There's no point in you trying to sort of understand what's going on here. What you need is you need a tool. In this case, what we can use is something called a JavaScript obfuscator or deobfuscator. So let's actually just paste this in and let's deobfuscate. And as you can see, we get code, which is technically readable. Obviously, this is more readable than this, right? I hope you can agree on that. Now, the whole purpose of me showing you this is not for you just to understand this. The purpose of me showing you this is to know what to do in a specific scenario. For example, if you ever see obfuscated JavaScript code now, now you know that you need to deobfuscate it and then you need to read the whole code. Now you may not understand it, but that's okay. But at least you know what to do in a specific scenario. This is useful, especially for beginners in ethical hacking. So now you know what to do, and that should be a lesson for you to keep learning and never right, stop. Learning. So that'll be it for this video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, comment, and please don't forget to also check my other videos, which should be somewhere on the screen. If not, then go to my playlists. Thank you.